Welcome back. I'm Taylor. This is Nick. Emerson's gone today, and it has been 4,397 days since Texas won the Big 12. Nick. Right out the gate. Shot at Texas. I like it. Nick. So, with recruiting, when Lincoln Riley left, it looked like all was gone. Okay? Took the coaching staff with him. He gutted the recruits. Took a few of those recruits with him. We were, what, mid to late 20s in recruiting after all that happened? Yeah, I believe we were sitting at 22. Yeah, so now Oklahoma, at this point, they're looking at stepping into the top 10 in recruiting. So are there any players that stepping out to you, anything that catches your eye? Uh, yeah, we were, we were sitting about 22. We're now ranked number 10 in the 2022 class, and that's coming from 2-7 sports. Uh, definitely some guys, you know, we got – Four 12-star guys and three three-stars. Um, you know, everybody signed. The only guy that isn't is Gentry Williams, a four-star corner. But Where's he out of? I'm not sure where he's out of exactly, but, um, you know, he's a super talented guy. Um, but just, just some guys that I'm really looking forward to is Gavin Sawchuk, running back. Um, I think he's the number number three overall running back in the recruiting class. Um, getting Kobe McKenzie flipped back to to Oklahoma after him decommitting. That was awesome. That was huge. And then we also signed Nick Evers, a, a quarterback that was that signed late. But it's we, we desperately needed a guy at the quarterback position and we got it. You know, Venables did a good job turning around this recruiting class when it was looking pretty down he's the top. He's salvaging dumps. it. He's salvaging it. He's doing what he can. He's doing what he can, and we're thankful. He did. And then uh, Jake Taylor and Jacob Sexton, two offensive linemen, were, were absolutely 100% on board with Oklahoma during this whole process. They, you know, they're tweeting about, hey, we're fully committed to Oklahoma. We've, this has been a dream come true for a lifetime. You know, those are two guys that I'm looking forward to having. Um, Nicholas Anderson a wide receiver, Rodney Anderson's younger brother. Ooh. So this kid's going to be talented, that's for sure. Um, Kobe McKenzie, linebacker out of Lubbock, and then Kip Lewis, two two four-star linebackers that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, going to be a great unit going forward, especially with uh, getting coached by Brent Venables. He knows what he's doing. Um, so I'm really hoping this year we have a – solid defense, man. You know, just a solid defense. That's all I'm asking. Just a solid defense. You know, if Caleb Williams stays, has a decent defense on the other side, who knows what we can do, you know. On top of that, Theo Weiss, it's probably old news now, but Theo Weiss, he's coming back. He's out of the transfer portal. Yep, he took his name out of the transfer portal, and that's huge because this receiving core still has so much potential. You know, you have um, Mario Williams, who is a five-star receiver, has – an insane amount of speed on him, which I love. Um, obviously, you got Marvin Mims, the talented, you know, freshman of 2020. That was absolute breakthrough. And then, yeah, you get Theo Weiss back, and then you get Drake Stoops thrown in there. It's it's going to be a talented receiving core. And, dude, I'm uh, telling receiving you, core. if Caleb Williams decides to come back, which, it, you know. It, it's looking like he, he should come back. That That's what it's pointing to. We're not saying he's coming back, but. Yeah, there's nothing official about it, but I just I I would be really surprised if if he if he didn't return to Oklahoma, especially getting Jeff Levy as an offensive coordinator because he would he would fit the the system so well with him being able to run the football. You know, I don't know how many you know over 50 yard runs he had in this season. I wrote this down. So Caleb Williams had a 66 yard touchdown run, a 41 yard touchdown run a 40-yard touchdown run, a 74-yard touchdown run, and he also had the 56, 56-yard run against Oklahoma State, which almost won the game, but wasn't quite oh, good man, enough. Oh, man, they were so close. Wasn't quite good enough. So, you know, you have all those those names you just listed, and then you throw Caleb Williams in there with that Jeb Le- Jeff Levy offense, and then a defense coached by Venables with some good recruits yeah. and with a new mentality. You know – I'm not – you know, here's the deal. I'm not looking to win the Big 12 next year by any means, but I think they can. They, they absolutely can. I think they can. can. Yeah, it's going to be a rebuilding season, of course. But, you know, 
we need to we need to take this opportunity that we have with the years that we have in the Big Twelve, you know, rebuild and just redevelop the whole OU program because it's going to be different. It's going to be completely different the way Venables is going to run it to what Riley had. And Venables did an interview. I don't know who was conducting the interview, but one of the questions was asked, is Oklahoma going to be tougher than what we, we've been in the past? And v- Venables basically came out and said, you know, we have our problems. All these other universities have their problems. We'll take ours. We're okay with that. And he, he absolutely said that this team's going to be more physical and more dominant than – than the years in the past, as in defensively, from a defensive standpoint. We need that so bad. We need that so bad. It, and it does kind of seem like, like, at least this past year, if the offense was doing good, the defense was shit. The defense was good, the offense was shit. We yeah. never really had a game where both were on point. I mean, you could kind of maybe say the Oklahoma State game. Dude, maybe, but they, it was kind of both mediocre. Here's something to think about. We very could have lost to – Tulane, we could have lost to Nebraska. We could have lost to West Virginia. We could have lost to Kansas State. Texas. Could have lost to Texas. Kansas. We, yeah, we played footsie <laughs> for a really long time Rock with chalk. Kansas. Rock chalk, Gabe. Rock chalk, baby. <laughs> so, what would OU's record be if we were in the SEC this season? Wouldn't be sexy. Would not what be would sexy. What would their record be? Depending on who they played, I think I it would think be. I think we'd have a losing season. Oh, yeah. There was something up with Riley, man. Well, we all know what up. it was now. I mean, we're kind of beating a dead horse, but. Yeah, but the, the question is how long was that really going on? It was I guess we'll, ne- we'll never know how long overnight. it was. But, yeah, it definitely wasn't overnight. Dude, that. Before I get mad. So, who did he actually take from Oklahoma? Don't you got to. A couple names down. I know I, you might have wrote them down. I don't know. I know yeah, he took like three got, of our guys. Okay, like he right got, off the bat. He did. Uh, very quick to jump ship to the whole Riley bandwagon. Relique Brown, uh, 2022 class, the number two running back in that whole class. He was going to be an absolute stud. Is he a five star? Yeah, he was a five star. Malachi Nelson was in the 2023 class. He was the number two quarterback. And Makai Lemon, I, I think they were teammates, but he was the number two athlete in the 2023 class. So they were real, real quick to decommit from Oklahoma and jump to USC. But I do believe they were California guys. What do you know? What the record USC's record was this year? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. I know it was. They were so bad that they didn't have any fans in the stands. I don't know. I know they were struggling early in the season, like before, before conference play. <clears throat> so. Do you think – how long do you think it takes Lincoln Riley to turn around that program? Because regardless or not, y'all, if, if – you know, whatever you guys think about Riley, he's going to turn that program around. I totally believe he, he absolutely will. absolutely will. He's already turning around the recruiting game. Uh, the, you kind of mentioned it earlier. The 2022 class isn't relevant at all, but the 2023 class is going to be a top ten for sure for Riley. Um yeah, give him a cup, three years, two years, and they're back in the top five. Give him, give him one season at USC to rebuild, and the next season expect it to be them winning the Pac-12. Okay, so so here's here's another question I'm gonna throw at you: Who gets to the college football playoff first after this year, Oklahoma or USC? Um. On the spot question. On the spot. That's a good question. The, I think the Pac-12 is weak, so I think he's going to have an easier path to college football playoff. But but there's more that goes into it than just that, though. Yeah, I that's a big that. factor. That's, that's a, a big fa- factor. I'm just saying. I don't know. I would rather have. I'll say this. I'd rather have Lebby and Venables on my squad than than Lincoln Lake Riley. Riley. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not just being a sore loser. I mean, it's not. We're paying those two. The same amount as what it takes to pay Lincoln Riley. Well, it's not even – it's not even – yes, but it's not even about the money. It's about the mentality. Yeah. It's about the championship mentality. Yeah, Riley had it, but, man, it seemed like as years went on, we kind of got softer. Yeah, we did. The 2017 Sooners was a freaking powerhouse. 
that they were they were good. I don't care what they said. Their defense was whatever. But that 2017 team, Dude, those were look, all Bob Stoops' players, man. Look at the roster though on that 2017 team. We have Baker Mayfield. We have Kyler Murray on the bench, ready to back him up. You got C.D. Lamb. You got Mark. Mark Brown. Andrews, who who lit it up today with the Ravens against. Uh, Green Bay. I don't know if they won. Did they win? Who knows? I'm not sure. But yeah, you got Mark Andrews. You got Dimitri Flowers. You got Rodney Anderson. Yeah, it was just freaky. That and the O line was stud studly. You got Orlando Brown at left tackle. Um, I don't know if we had Creed Humphrey. Ah, oh, the Packers point. won 31 to 30. But well, whatever. <laughs> anyways, you know. I'm excited about this 22, uh, 22 class from where we're at, from being in the 20s to being at top 10 again. Within how long, though? Within, like, what, two weeks? Yeah, if that. Two weeks. Two weeks, so. Yeah. Also, you know, we got a uh, – the dude of the Hayes, I think his name is Jaron Koenig. Just up the street from us. Yep, just – 45 minutes away from us here. Um, yeah, he's the guy that's committed to Clemson right now, but he got crystal ball to Oklahoma. So that says a lot. You know, he might follow follow old Brent Vittables. So really fast kid, though. I know he's like state track fast. So <clears throat> that's just one thing to look forward to. And possibly some other guys following him. But we also have seven spots left, left open for possible uh, – Transfer portal. And you never know what will happen. Exactly. And best of luck to Spencer Radler and uh, Stogner. Yep. Best of two. luck to them, honestly. No hard feelings at all. Um, no. At the, end, at the end of the day, um, you really have to do what's best for you, and um, it is what it is. Lincoln Riley, you can kiss my ass because you really did a real shitty job of leaving and what everything you did and how you did it. But, you know um, – <laughs> Yeah, those two went to South Carolina, and I'm happy Didn't for him go to as UCLA. well. He, he originally said he was going to go to UCLA, and the rumors were going around that he's going to go to Nebraska, but he didn't. That, yeah. that would have been kind of cool. Yeah, but I'm happy for him. Those two going together, so I think that immediately makes that team better. Stogner I do too. Was the number one tight end. I do too. In that transfer portal, so and they got a good coach too. They do. South Carolina does. Um. You really have anything else? Kind of a shorter video today. Um, later on, we're going to talk about um, some Oklahoma versus Oregon. Later on, some Alamo Bowl breakdown. Ethan Thomas, he's our friend that works with us. He is an Oregon fan. He is going to be on our show, and there's going to be a lot of shit talking. But it's going to be fun. A lot of respect for each other. Nick, do you have anything? I would say the last thing, um, we appreciate all you guys. We've been getting a lot more subscribers and a lot more likes, a lot more views. So, shout out to you guys. You guys are making it happen. So, we appreciate go. that. We like the feedback, too. We like the positive feedback. We like the negative feedback, too, and we'll talk right back to you. So, feedback is <laughs> feedback, and we appreciate it, guys, you know, all around. Um, With that being said, Boomer Sooner. Boomer Sooner. We'll see you guys later.